Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Holy Spirit Revealed This Today. My name is Amy Vega, and I'm going to be sharing with you in this video uh, what I've been shown by Holy Spirit from June 26th through July 2nd, which is today. And um, yeah, so everything that you need to know as far as uh, where to follow me and know what I'm sharing from Holy Spirit is in the description box. Um, so there's a blog, X, and Truth Social uh, information to follow me there. And um, I interact most on X. So if you want to interact with me, that's where I do most of the interacting. Um, and the scriptures that I'm led to pertain to this very day that we're living in. And um, there's information on my blog uh, and also in the description box about that. And um, so we'll go ahead and get started. I just want to give all glory to God and honor to him for everything that he's revealing to me and everything I'm sharing with you in this video. Um, I will be sharing signs and wonders um, at the end of the video. And um, I know it's hard for people to listen to so many videos every week. Trust me, I know what you mean. Um, so I think that I don't know how to do it because I've never done it, but I think there's like a gear or something that you can select and it can speed me up. <laughs> so, cause I'm having to go from my notes. And so, you know, when you go from notes, instead of just talking, sometimes it goes a little, you'd speak a little slower. So, um, so feel free to speed me up if you need to get through it quicker. Um, all right. So I want to just pray to get us started. Father, I just want to release your glory over each person that's watching and release your healing to them from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet, everything in their body, every cell, Lord, heal it and restore it in Jesus name. And in the name of Jesus, I dispatch your warring angels, your communication angels, your camouflage angels to protect this video recording, to place a hedge of protection around me and my family and my home and around all who are watching this recording and to hide this video from the enemy. I declare Isaiah 54, 17 over each of us that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise up against us, we shall show to be in the wrong. Luke 10, 19 says, behold, I've given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. And your word in Matthew 16, 19 says, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will have been bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will have been loosed in heaven. So right now, Father, I stand on your word and sever all witchcraft off of us, off of all of our families all who are watching this video, off of our homes and our ministries, off of our social media platforms. And I bind and render every demon deaf, dumb, blind, and paralyzed. I bind and forbid you from manifesting in my home against in the homes of the people that are watching and against our family members and their homes, against our health and our pets' health, against our electronics, our appliances, our plumbing, and our vehicles. I forbid you from sabotaging this broadcast or any of our social media platforms in any way, shape, or form. Only the Holy Spirit can manifest here and in our homes. So Holy Spirit, have your way with me in this broadcast. Amen. All right. So on June 26th, this is going to be an amazing video, I think, because of the things I was shown this week. I really feel like we are, we're here. Um, this time that we've been waiting for is here, July. Okay. So things are really ramped up. Um, Isaiah four is what I was led to on June 26. And I titled it, the world is about to drastically change for the better. So I'm going to show you something as I read. Okay. So father, son, and Holy spirit led me with my eyes closed to Isaiah four for the 16th time. 16 is the love of God. The world is about to drastically change as God cleanses us and makes us holy through the spirit of judgment and the spirit of burning. Then we will live in the tangible abiding presence of the Lord, which is what I think this picture represents. So Isaiah four, three through six in the Berean study Bible, whoever remains in Zion and whoever is left in Jerusalem will be called holy all in Jerusalem who are recorded among the living. When the Lord has washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and cleansed the blood stains from the heart of Jerusalem by a spirit of judgment and a spirit of fire, then the Lord will create over all of Mount Zion and over her assemblies, a cloud of smoke by day and a glowing flame of fire by night for over all the glory 
there will be a canopy, a shelter to give shade from the heat by day and a refuge and hiding place from the storm and the rain. So when I posted that scripture on X on that day, which is the first place I post, I received a timestamp of 1144 and I looked up scripture and it confirmed the message. So Leviticus 1144, I am the Lord, your God, Lord, L-O-R-D capital. I am the Lord, your God, and you must dedicate yourselves to me and be holy just as I am holy. And the biblical meaning of 11 and 44 also confirmed the message. So 11 being transitioned to the kingdom era, 11th hour judgment upon disorder. And 44 is a double portion of revelation, light breaking through darkness. All right. Then on June 27th, I was led to Isaiah 4 again with my eyes closed. This is always with my eyes closed. So it's just stunning to me when this happens. Um, so I called it, um, I titled it, God's glory is about to invade the earth. Holy Spirit instructed me to open my Bible to a random page, which I did with my eyes closed, and then told me to turn five pages. Five is grace. To Isaiah 4, four's open door for the 17th time. 17 is overcoming victory. I was led to the same scripture yesterday. So God's glory is about to invade the earth, prepare the way of the Lord. And this time I took um, Isaiah 4, 2 through 6 and the good news translation. I love going to different translations and reading the word and I get more, I get different information and revelations from doing that. So the time is coming when the Lord will make every plant and tree in the land grow large and beautiful. All the people of Israel who survive will take delight and pride in the crops that the land produces. Everyone who is left in Jerusalem, whom God has chosen for survival, will be called holy. By his power, the Lord will judge and purify the nation and wash away the guilt of Jerusalem and the blood that has been shed there. Then over Mount Zion and over all who are gathered there, the Lord will send a cloud in the daytime and smoke and a bright flame at night. God's glory will cover and protect the whole city. His glory will shade the city from the heat of the day and make it a place of safety, sheltered from rain and storm. All right, so when I posted the message on X that day, I received a timestamp of 1152. Psalm 115 verse 2 confirms, why should the nations say where now is their God? That was the Amplified. And I felt an unction on this day to post this. So I said, I feel an unction to declare the eagle is about to soar. And I'm not kidding you. I hadn't looked at any social media before posting that. That was just in my spirit. And then things, I was seeing things all over the place about the eagle soaring um, after I posted that. And then I also, when I posted that, um, I didn't realize, but I posted it at 1210 um, and Psalm 121. So 1210, you take the zero away. It's 121. So Psalm 121 confirmed. I will lift up my eyes to the hills of Jerusalem from where shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth, who will not allow your foot to slip, who keeps you he who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber briefly nor sleep soundly. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade and your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will guard your going out and your coming in everything that you do from this time forth and forever. And then when I went to go um, enter the blog post, so I always put it on X first, then True Social, then I jump over to on the blog. And when I went to put it on the blog, blogger noted the time was one o'clock. So that's one. One is the number that has to do with superiority, priority, beginnings, and God himself. It has to do with unity. We are one nation under God. The eagle is about to soar. So I thought maybe that was why the Lord revealed to me recently in the sky, the, the bear host that was holding the head of Goliath. And so I'll show you one with a drawing on it. 
So this um, was over in my front yard. This is a host and it's in the shape of a bear. Um, got kind of a rotund belly there and he's holding Goliath's head here and another head over here. And I'll show you without the drawing. All right, so look at this. You can see Goliath has his eyes closed. He is a goner. This is his head. There's his nose and here's his mouth. Here's his head right here. So he's carrying his head in that hand and he's got another head over here. So the eagle's about to soar and Goliath is about to fall. So then my friend Deborah noted um, that David, who's DJ today, number 45, David killed Goliath. But before he killed Goliath, he killed the lion and the bear first. The bear with Goliath's head is symbolic that there will never be a victory over Goliath, who is the deep state NWO, if it wasn't first for the bear. And she noted that England is the lion and Russia is the bear. So think capitulation to her where the nation submit, submitted to DJ. Okay, And as I typed that, I felt Holy Spirit on it. Um, and this makes a way for DJ or David to take down Goliath, which is the deep state NWO thugs. I mean, so it's so interesting how God gives us all information in parts and we are the body. And when we work together in unison, we have a bigger picture. It's so amazing. Um, Deborah looked up scripture for, for the presidential debate that was going to be that evening um, between DJ and Joe, who's not really Joe. Um, and she came up with uh, 1 Samuel 17, 45 through 47. Okay, so first of all, 17, which is the number of that letter in the alphabet, the 17th letter, which I won't say here so I don't get kicked off. Um, it's also 17 is overcoming victory. And then 45 through 47 are the, the presidential um, election. Um, I don't know, the number of the president. I guess that's what you would say. DJ was 45, 46, and he's 47. Okay, so here's 1 Samuel 17, 45 through 47. Um, here's four, verse 45. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Okay, so that's verse 45, and we refer to DJ as 45. Verse 46, this day, this day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day, I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God of Israel. Okay, so it kept saying this day in there and was wondering, if the, is that debate day? Well, since debate day, we've heard from Julie Green and others that that really like started something. It started a cascade of something, that debate. So I think this day might refer to the debate. Um, Julie Green had an urgent word to DJ on his glory with uh, Pastor Dave Scarlett on that the day before this day that I'm talking about, that talked about the stone that DJ would throw during the debate. And it would take down the entire Biden family and the Democratic Party. Okay. So, and that verse talked about this day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand. Isn't that interesting? And he, is, that's verse 46, and he is currently number 46. Okay, and then number, verse 47, then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. So I said, uh, note, Julie Green's prophetic word said, if DJ will completely submit to the Lord, he will fight for him and give him the victory in the debate and that it was a spiritual debate that had to be fought in the spirit. 
Okay, so DJ will expose Joe and the Democrats if the de in the debate and will be President 47 if he trusts in the Lord and listens to the prophets. All right, so I say get your popcorn ready. Then another person, um, Brenda on X, shared a song called Soar. So referring back to the eagle will soar. Um, and it is by, there's a, um, I'll, I will put a link for it. It's an absolutely beautiful song. I've been listening to it over and over. And um, it's called Soar. It's about America. And it's written by Laura C. She goes by Laura C. And she has a YouTube site, which is all um, different prophetic worship songs. It's amazing. Um, so I will share a link uh, for that. And it's very much applicable to this very moment that we're in. All right. So then June 28th, I was led to Zechariah 13, and I titled it, Choose This Day Whom You Will Serve. And um, on this day, I progressively became more and more drunk in the spirit until I almost fell asleep. That's been happening to me a lot lately um, as I sat down to spend time with the Lord and his word. And um definitely seems to be a pattern, especially when he's revealing difficult things to me. Um, so, and this was one of those things, um, Holy spirit. So Holy spirit led me to Zechariah 13. This was the 10th time I've been led there. 10 is God's timeline, his divine order. So I wrote, stay close to the Lord. Many will perish and those who remain will go through the refiner's fire. And for those who do, the future will be like a dream, glorious. So give yourself over to the fire and don't be afraid of it and just go through it. You'll come out really good on the other side of it. Um, Zechariah 13, 8 through 9 in the Amplified. It will come about in all the land, declares the Lord. Two parts in it will be cut off and perish, but the third will be left alive. And I will bring the third part through the fire, refine them as silver is refined and test them as gold is tested. They will call on my name and I will listen and answer them. I will say they are my people and they will say the Lord is my God. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal savior and you remain close to him, listening to his word, spending time with him each day, you will not be in fear. Instead, you will see the coming events from his perspective, and you will be sheltered from the storm that is nearly upon us. Judgment is coming very soon for the wicked. The severity of it will be equivalent to the flood in the days of Noah. It won't be the flood, but it's going to be equivalent. This is the time of the great separation. Choose this day whom you will serve. Joshua 24, 15. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as far as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. On June 29th, I was led to Isaiah 8 and I titled it, You Are in God's Hands. So after praying in the spirit, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit had uh, led me with my eyes closed to Isaiah 8 for the 16th time. And a lot of that lately, 16th time of things. Are you noticing that? So 16 is the love of God. Do not be in fear or focus on conspiracies and threats. Do not see yourself at the mercy of opposing armies. You are in God's hands. Get right with him, trust him, and he will protect you. And it started thundering outside as I posted that on X that morning. I was typing that, writing that out. Um, Isaiah 8, 6 through 15 in the CEV version stood out to me. These people have refused the gentle waters of Shiloh and have gladly gone over to the side of King Rezin and King Pekah. Now I will send the king of Assyria against them with his powerful army, which will attack like the mighty Euphrates River. Overflowing its banks, enemy soldiers will cover Judah like a flood reaching up to your neck. But God is with us. He will spread his wings and protect our land. All of you foreign nations go ahead and prepare for war, but you will be crushed. Get together and make plans, but you will fail because God is with us. The Lord took hold of me with his powerful hand and said, I'm warning you, don't act like these people. Don't call something a rebellious plot just because they do. And don't be afraid of something just because they are. I am the one you should fear and respect. I am the holy God, the Lord, all powerful. 
Run to me for protection. I am a rock that will make both Judah and Israel stumble and break their bones. I am a trap that will catch the people of Jerusalem. They will be captured and dragged away. And when I posted that message on X on that day, I received a timestamp of 1219. 12 is perfect government of God. So justice and righteousness. 19 is exploits of faith. There were several 12 verse 19 scriptures that confirmed the message. So there was Ezekiel 12, 19 in the CEV. Tell the people of Israel that I, the Lord, say that someday everyone in Jerusalem will shake when they eat and tremble when they drink. Their country will be destroyed and left empty because they have been cruel and violent. Romans 12, 19 in the CEV. Dear friends, don't try to get even. Let God take revenge. In the scriptures, the Lord says, I am the one to take revenge and pay them back. Job 12, 19 in the CEV. God removes priests and others who have great power. And Proverbs 12, 19 in the CEV. Truth will last forever. Lies are soon found out. And when I started the blog post on that day, blogger noted the time was 8.08. It was confirmation of new beginnings as things begin to shake and we enter into the kingdom age. And then the last thing was I noticed when I enlarged the image, the artwork that I picked this day to go with the blog post, I didn't realize it when I picked it, but the wagons that are going through the, the Red Sea are full of gold. <laughs> Look at that. So this is depicting the gold, the wealth that they received back, that everything that had been stolen from them was restored to them. They took all the wealth of Egypt with them. So I feel like we're very close to the wealth transfer, extremely close. So I just thought that was prophetic that I somehow managed to pick that artwork. <laughs> okay. On um, June 30th, I was led to Zechariah 3, and I titled it, A New Day is Dawning. With my eyes closed, Holy Spirit led me to Zechariah 3, and then I declared it. It prophesies our day when the branch, Jesus, will remove the iniquity of our land in one day, clothe us in his righteousness, and bring peace, prosperity, fruitfulness, and life to all who walk in his ways. Praise the Lord. So Zechariah 3, verses 8 through 10 in the Amplified Classic stood out to me. Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest, you and your colleagues who usually sit before you, for they are men who are a sign or omen, types of what is to come. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. For behold, upon the stone which I have set before Joshua, upon that one stone are seven eyes or facets, that all-embracing providence of God and the sevenfold radiations of the Spirit of God. Behold, I will carve upon it its inscription, says the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity and guilt of this land in a single day. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, you shall invite each man and each man his neighbor under his own vine and his own fig tree. And when I posted that on X that day, I received a timestamp of 1058 and Psalm 105 verse 8 confirms. So it's amazing how the Lord's doing that. I'm, he's just totally ordering my steps all day, even when I feel like I'm like, I just got tired and took a nap and now I'm behind and, you know, everything. So anyway, um, Psalm 105 verse eight, he is earnestly mindful of his covenant and forever it is imprinted on his heart, the word which he commanded and established to a thousand generations. Isn't that amazing? And then as another side note, I didn't think about it until after I selected the artwork for this blog post um, that we're very close to the big event that the Lord's been having us pray happens on or before July 4th to usher in his kingdom era. Look at this artwork I picked. So I'm like, oh, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> I think that's prophetic too. How amazing. Okay, then on July 1st, which is interesting that it was July 1st, because we have just entered the shaking month, I think, um, where things are really going to rock and roll. And I was led to Isaiah 10 again. Oh my gosh. And I titled it, Woe to the Assyrian. So. 
amazing that he's starting me out on the very first day of this month with this. Um, so Father, Son, and Holy Spirit led me to Isaiah 10 for the 19th time. 19, God is ordering judgment and putting things in order. And before I opened my eyes, so like when I turned to the scripture, my eyes are closed. And before I opened my eyes to see what scripture I was at, I heard five. So when I opened my eyes, I thought I was going to look at like ver uh, chapter five of something because I didn't know where I was, but I was in Isaiah 10 and there's no like chapter numbers on that page. And I was like, oh, he's referring me to verse five, which is the verse I always am led to when I go to this scripture, which is woe to the Assyrian, the rod of my anger, the staff in whose hand is my indignation and fury against Israel's disobedience. Amazing. So um, I got a timestamp on X of 1224 when I posted that. 12, God's perfect government, seed, time, and harvest. 24, <clears throat> God's perfect government being made manifest. Watch for the boomerang. And then today, July 2nd, I was led to Job 16, and I titled it, Lean on Jesus as July Shakes and Quakes. And Holy Spirit instructed me on this day, um, today, to open my Bible to a random page, which I did with my eyes closed. And I was drunk in the spirit. Um, I woke up. I don't I don't normally have um, dreams. Sorry, I keep hitting my, I keep hitting this thing. Um, I don't, I don't, I mean, I probably do dream because everybody dreams, but I normally don't remember my dreams. Um, the only dreams I've remembered um, for the most part, are dreams where I'm dreaming that somebody is going to pass away. I don't know why I get those. Um, but I had a dream like when I was young girl that my mother was going to pass away. And um, I dreamt how it happened. And it happened two days later, exactly how I dreamt it. Um, I had a dream that my, that I was um, in the fuselage of a big liner, uh, airliner, and I was flying through the fuselage, fuselage after it hit the ground. So it crashed and I was flying through the fuselage and I woke up <clears throat> to hear my husband say, I'm going flying. <laughs> like, really? So I'm like, I felt like I should tell him, I don't think you should fly today, but, um, he would not believe me. So I just started praying, 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 praying. And he told me later that on the way to the airport, he all of a sudden started thinking, okay, if there's anything wrong with this airplane, if I hear anything at all, I'm not flying today. I'm going to listen really carefully. And if there's any hiccups at all, I'm not flying. And so he was flying. Somebody was flying with him. He was because my husband built his own airplane and this guy was building a similar airplane. So he was taking him up to go flying in it. And um, the guy was like, Jabber John. And he's like, Ch -ch -ch, I got to listen <laughs> on takeoff. He listened on takeoff and he heard the teeniest burp and aborted the flight. And when he aborted the flight, he, um, which he wouldn't have heard if he hadn't been. So if I hadn't been praying and he hadn't been dialed into it. And if he hadn't told the guy, Shh, I need to listen he heard this little tiny burp and he's like, nope. And the guy was like, what are you doing? He landed the plane. He went and he looked and he opened it up and he took the carburetor apart and it was completely calcified. The fuel line was blocked. He would have crashed. So praise the Lord. I did not realize that I was prophetic at that time. I don't know how that didn't clue me in, but um, since then I've been told, you know, I've been told that somebody was passed that I didn't hear from in a while. And I was like praying for that person. And I was told, Holy Spirit told me that person's passed. And I was like, what? And I said, ask for confirmation. I received confirmation two days later. Um, and then my neighbor um, just had surgery and I was told she's not going to make it. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> so I start praying like crazy. You know, I was going up to the hospital and praying over her and laying hands on her and everything. She did pass away, just went to her funeral. So anyways, I woke up this morning with a dream. There's another dream I remembered. Um, I had an encounter with Kim Clement 
and Johnny Enlow in my dream. I'm told it was an impartation dream. I'll share that one sometime, sometime later, but that's another one I remember. I can remember these like, like I just had them, like they're like lifelike. So anyways, I woke up this morning with a dream that somebody I know passed. Um, and it's troublesome. So I'm praying and I put out a request um, on X for people to pray um, for this person. His name is Ryan. So if y'all could pray, just, I can't share a lot about it, um, but just pray, pray, pray protection over him. Because every time I have these dreams, they come to pass. So um, anyway, so I was, I was feeling a little like, you know, so anyway, I think when that happens, lately, I'm just getting filled with the spirit. I was drunk in the spirit this morning as I was typing this. I'm surprised I could even put it together. Um, okay, so back to this. Um, Job 16, lean on Jesus as July quakes and shakes. So um, Holy Spirit had me open my Bible to a random page, which I did with my eyes closed. Then he told me to turn 12 pages. Um, and I was at Job 16. This is the third time I've been led there. And it is the seven things. So from Job 16, 16 again is the love of God. Um, we can learn seven things that Jesus offers every believer. So number one is comfort and love. Job lamented that his friends had failed to offer him comfort when he needed it the most. When the world rejects you in your time of pain, Jesus offers his comfort and love. Two, encouragement and strength. Job revealed what he needed most from his friends was to be strengthened through their encouragement. When you feel beaten down or defeated and you call out to him, Jesus offers his encouragement and strength. And he will strengthen you. So number three, healing. Job incorrectly alleged that God was the source of his physical illnesses and pain. Contrary to what Job believed, Jesus offers you his healing when you are suffering from illness and pain. Number four is protection. Job also incorrectly believed that God viewed him as an enemy and that God was subjecting Job to his wrath. Although contrary to what Job believed, also contrary to what Job believed, Jesus offers you as protection when you're under attack. Number five is answered prayers. Job expressed his misunderstanding that his prayers were not being heard. Also contrary to what Job believed, Jesus can answer your prayers when you pray properly. Yeah, pray it within his will. Number six is deliverance. Job pleaded for his advocate in heaven to help deliver him. Jesus reveals that he is your advocate and offers you deliverance. And seven is hope for eternal life. Job believed that he would die soon with no hope of restoration after death. Also, contrary to Job's misunderstandings, Jesus offers you the hope of an eternal life with him. So I will put a, um, that was from inspired scripture. So I've shared that before. So, um, I felt to share that again. I'll put a link for that again. And then my friend called me today and shared this with me, which is so profound. Um, we're just like, our minds are under attack right now. And the enemy is just finding every which way to attack our, our you know, just our morale um, our energy level, you know, bunch of things. So we just really need to be taking authority over all of those areas of our lives. But she shared with me Romans eight, and it's in the message translation, which I had never heard. And it describes exactly where we are right now. We are pregnant with anticipation and we have reached full term and are ready to birth this new nation and world. All right, so listen to this. This is the message translation of Romans 8. With the arrival of Jesus, the Messiah, that fateful dilemma is resolved. Those who enter the enter into Christ being here for us no longer have to live under a continuous low-lying black cloud. A new power is in operation, the spirit of life in Christ. Like a strong wind has magnificently cleared the air, freeing you from a faded lifetime of brutal tyranny at the hands of sin and death. God went for the jugular when he sent his own son. He didn't deal with the problem as something remote and unimportant. 
in his son, Jesus, he personally took on the human condition, entered the disordered mess of struggling humanity in order to set it right once and for all. The law code, weakened as it always was by fractured human nature, could never have done that. The law always ended up being used as a band-aid on sin instead of a deep healing of it. And now what the law code asked for, but we couldn't deliver is accomplished as we, instead of redoubling our own efforts, simply embrace what the spirit is doing in us. Those who think they can do it on their own end up obsessed with measuring their own moral muscle, but never get around to exercising it in real life. Those who trust God's action in them find that God's spirit is in them, living and breathing, the living and breathing God. Obsession with self in these matters is a dead end. Attention to God leads us out into the open, into a spacious, free life. Focusing on the self is the opposite of focusing on God. Anyone completely absorbed in self ignores God, ends up thinking more about self than God. That person ignores who God is and that he and what he is doing, and God isn't pleased at being ignored. But if God himself has taken up residence in your life, you can hardly be thinking more of yourself than of him. Anyone, of course, who has not welcomed this invisible but clearly present God, the Spirit of Christ, won't know what we're talking about. But for you who welcome him, in whom he dwells, even though you still experience all the limitations of sin, you yourself experience life on God's terms. It stands to reason, doesn't it, that if the, if, if the alive and present God who raised Jesus from the dead moves into your life, he'll do the same thing in you that he did in Jesus, bringing you alive to himself. When God lives and breathes in you, and he does as surely as he did in Jesus, you are delivered from that dead life. With his spirit living in you, your body will be as alive as Christ's. So don't you see that we don't owe this old do-it-yourself life one red cent? There's nothing in it for us, nothing at all. The best thing to do is to give it a decent burial and get on with your new life. God's spirit beckons. There are things to do and places to go. This resurrection life you received from God is not a timid, grave-tending life. It's adventurously expectant, greeting God with a childlike, what's next, Papa? God's spirit touches our spirits and confirms who we really are. We know who he is, and we know who we are, father and children, and we know we are going to get what's coming to us, an unbelievable inheritance. We go through exactly what Christ goes through. If we go through the hard times with him, then we're certainly going to go through the good times with him. That's why I don't think there's any comparison between the present hard times and the coming good times. We're talking about now here, folks. The created world itself can hardly wait for what is coming next. Everything in creation is being more or less held back. God reigns it in until both creation and all the creatures are ready and can be released at the same moment into the glorious times ahead. Meanwhile, the joyful anticipation deepens. All around us, we observe a pregnant creation. The difficult times of pain throughout the world are simply birth pangs, but it's not only around us, it's within us. The spirit of God is arousing us within. We're also feeling the birth pangs. These sterile and barren bodies of ours are yearning for full deliverance. That is why waiting does not diminish us any more than waiting diminishes a pregnant mother. We are enlarged in the waiting, we, of course, don't see what is enlarging us, but the longer we wait, the larger we become and the more joyful our expectancy. Meanwhile, the moment we get tired in the waiting, God's spirit is right alongside helping us along. If we don't know how or what to pray, it doesn't matter. He does our praying in and for us, making prayer out of our wordless sighs, our aching groans. He knows us far better than we know ourselves, knows our pregnant condition and keeps us present before God. That's why we can be so sure that every detail in our lives of love for God is worked into something good. God knew what he was doing from the very beginning. He decided from the outset to shape the lives of those who love him along the same lines as the life of his son. The son stands first in the line of humanity he restored. We see the original and intended shape of our lives there in him. 
After God made that decision of what his children should be like, he followed it up by calling people by name. After he called them by name, he set them on a solid basis with himself. And then after getting them established, he stayed with them to the end, gloriously completing what he had begun. So what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? If God didn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us, embracing our condition and exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son, is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? And who would dare tangle with God by messing with one of God's chosen? Who would dare even point a finger? The one who died for us, who is raised to life for us, is in the presence of God in this very moment sticking up for us. Do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love for us? There's no way. Not trouble, not hard times, not hatred, not anger, not homelessness, not bullying threats, not backstabbing, not even the worst sins listed in the scripture. They kill us in cold blood because they hate you. We're sitting ducks. They pick us off one by one. None of this phases us because Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get in between us and God's love because of the way that Jesus, our master, has embraced us. That's Romans 8 in the message translation. Isn't that amazing? I just thought that was so timely. Okay, so I'm going to share with you some signs and wonders, and we'll start off with Jesus. <laughs> so this was on my side yard, and this is Jesus. This is him in profile, and you can see the collar of his garment and uh, his robe here. The sun is shining right here, and there's an or there's orbs. So I think these are probably angels, um, and there's a crown on his head. So I'll show you the next one without drawing on it there he is isn't that amazing and I have a close-up of his head there he is isn't that amazing praise the Lord So next one, saw this guy popping through the clouds. You can't really see his eyes too much, but you can see his nose right here. You can see his mouth. His chin is right here. So here's his head right here. Isn't that amazing? He's just kind of popping through. I have another picture of him from a distance that's um, equally amazing. So you can see what I saw when I looked up there. So basically, I'm looking up in the sky, and there he is right here. Isn't that stunning? Just amazing. I saw this one today and you can see a face right here of an angel and there's um I think this is something probably demonic they're facing off here lots of warfare going on but it's faint here's his eye the nose here's his lips his chin his neck so, and he's got lots of hair up here or something on his head, a garment of some kind. And you can see here um, the eyes and kind of a big nose and a mouth of this demonic thing. You can see a demonic um, entity up here. And you can see another, like a goat looking thing right here. Here's nostrils, mouth. It's got a pointy face, big ears right here. So you can see that's a goat. Okay, so <clears throat> lots of warfare happening. Oh, 
And when I was out about town, I saw this guy driving on the highway. It's interesting trying to take a picture while you're driving. <laughs> you do the best you can do. Um, but you can see these guys facing off here. So there's a big host here. Here's a nose, lips, chin. Here's the hair or whatever. And then over here, you've got, um, here's an eye, a nose. Here's the mouth, big pointy chin. And they're facing off up there. And you've got some other stuff up here. There's another um, host up here. So you can see the eyes and the mouth right here. And he may be facing off with this guy here. This may be something else going on. If there's a lot of warfare happening up there. And then this is another one I saw going down the road. Big host here. Going after, you know, facing off with something here or chit-chatting. <laughs> but I do notice that the hosts are um, a lot bigger than the demons. The, the demons are outnumbered and outgunned for sure. And these two are either chatting or yelling at each other. Here's the eye right here. Nostril. Here's the mouth. And then the other one. Here's the eye in this area here. It looks like you might have lots of eyes, but this is an eye. Nose area. And his mouth, I think, is down here. This might be his nose right nostril right here. So you can see they're, they're staring eye to eye with each other. And I showed you a while back this cloud I saw at the beach. And I didn't have a picture of Sun Tzu. And I said, go get a picture of Sun Tzu. And you can see what I mean, how similar they look. So let me just blow up this. So you see the face of this cloud. There's eye. It's got kind of a flat nose. He's got like a mustache here. Here's the lips and the chin and all this get up on the, on the head. And look at this. Are they identical or what? My friend Karen on X pointed this out when I posted this picture. She's like, it's Sun Tzu. They have the same eye shape and everything. It's incredible. Incredible. And some of you asked if I could show... The picture of my mom again. I saw my mom in the cloud of witnesses. My mom passed away when I was 13 years old. When I went outside, I saw this woman up in the sky. And you can see her eyes. You can see the, pup the, the white of her eye here. You can see her eyebrows. You can see her hairdo. Her nose. Her mouth looks like it's agape. Like she's like, oh my gosh probably saying, oh my gosh, there she is, because I walked out the door. You can see her neck. Um, and so then I, a little while later, I went back in the house and I was looking at a picture that's on my wall of my mom. And I put them side by side. And I was like, I think that's my mom. <laughs> I think the Lord just showed me my mom in the, in the cloud of witnesses. Is that amazing? So pretty much everybody I've showed this to says yes. Because even look at the eye and look at the eye. Um, matches. You can see the eyebrows are the same. But everyone I've shown this picture to is in agreement that that is my mom. And um, when I asked the Lord, I felt like he said it is my mom. So I just, that was such a blessing to see her and to know that she's in heaven. So um so i thought i'd share that again a couple more pictures um here's another face off i'm seeing a lot of face offs lately so there's a host here on this side here's the mouth area nose area here's the eye and he's facing off with this guy over here you can see his eye right here his nose his mouth he's got a bunch of curly hair up there 
So, and there's another something here, could be a host. Okay. And then there was this guy. Um, so you can see his eye, his nose right here, see his nostrils and his mouth. You can tell pretty clearly that's a face there. And then this is a big host, um, real big. So he's taking up basically the whole sky over there. Here's his eye. Yeah, I think it is his nose and his mouth is right here. So, and he's facing off with this little thing over here, whatever that is. And um, just before I did the video, I walked outside and this is over my roof. So this is a big host right here. And it's interesting because there's a face right here. There's also an eye right here um, and a mouth right here. So that um, it looks like, looks like this is his nose. So this is very typical what I see. Um, these hosts are multifaceted, have multiple faces on them. Um, but I have a close up of that face to show you. So this is a close-up of that face. So you can see an eye right here. And I think this is the nose. And it's got like a, almost like a little beak mouth. Isn't that something? So he, I think he's one of the good guys just sitting up there protecting me. I need protection because I see a lot of bad stuff up there too. Okay, and then I saw this above my house right before getting on, and I saw a face here. Let me see if I can find it on here. So it's a little bit harder to tell on here. I saw a face in this area right here. Um, I think it's this where the eyes are and this mouth here. Um, and you can see something over here. So you see the eye right here and the nose and the mouth. He's looking to the left here. And I saw a face in here. Now I can't see it on here. It might be the, um, might be the um, exposure level that's on here because I can't see him. Oh, there he is. I see him now. Yeah, it's the exposure level. Yeah, you can barely see them. Here's the eye right here. Another eye right here. See the nostrils? Little nostrils, and here's the mouth. So it's like a face right here. Just wild. This is a big host up here. You see the nose? The nose right here. Mouth area. Eyes over here. So that's a big host up here. Here's the eye. So a big host and some kind of spirit right here. So this could be maybe a bad guy getting destroyed right here, which is why you can only see a little bit of him. Don't know. Anyway, that was over top of my house right before I got on this video. All right. So I just want to take this moment and invite any of you who are watching, who've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Now is the time to do it. It's the time of the great separation and you want to, you, you need to decide who you're with. Are you with team Jesus or are you with the side of the evil? Um, there is no middle ground. Um, it is one or the other. So he offers you life. He is the, tr the life, the truth, and the way. Um, he's the only way to heaven. He's your ticket to heaven. Um, just by accepting him. Not it, You don't get to heaven by your good works. You don't do great things and give lots of money and do all those things on earth. 
to get into heaven. You can't get into heaven unless you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So if you've never done that, now is the perfect time. So repeat this prayer after me. Father God, I recognize I am a sinner. I come to you asking forgiveness of my sins. I confess in my heart and speak with my mouth that Jesus Christ is your son and he died on the cross for my sins. I confess Jesus as the Lord of my heart, my soul, and my life. I accept Jesus as my personal Savior, and I praise you for making a way for me. I declare by the blood of Jesus, I am saved. Jesus, I invite you into my life, and I pray you continue to reveal your love to me by your Holy Spirit. I ask you to have your way with my life. I thank you for the new creation that you have made me. So if you said that prayer, thank you and welcome to God's family. So I just want to close with um, a prayer from this book that I love, Daily Decrees for Government and Nations. So just be in agreement with me as I declare it. It is called Delivered from Wicked and Evil People. We decree deliverance from every attack that would be attempted from violent, irrational, and unreasonable people. We say no assailant can succeed in any form of physical or verbal assault. We break the power of every attacker, raider, intruder, liar, accuser, persecutor, or evil antagonist in the name of Jesus. We declare they cannot enact violence against us for our faith, our message, or our stand for truth. We prophesy that no weapon formed against us can prosper because the angels of the Lord stand watch to protect us from evil. We speak protection over our loved ones and our property. We plead the blood of Jesus upon our lives to save us in every situation and to prevent the workers of darkness from any scheme that would steal our peace. We prophesy deliverance, escape, and rescue by the hand of the Lord against every wicked snare. We say deliverance rests upon us, upon our families, our homes, and our communities, and we live in peace and safety in Jesus' name. And we stand on 2 Thessalonians 3, 1 through 2 in the King James. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. And Psalm 140, verse 1 in the King James, Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man. All right, so that's the end of this video. And I love you guys very much. Keep standing, keep praying. Um, don't give in to anything. Don't compromise. Do not comply with anything. Just stand on the word of the Lord and Stay close to Jesus, and we're all going to do awesome. We have a very glorious future ahead of us. So see you next time.